Live Better and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert from fitness.com, and welcome to The Fitness Show. I just got back from a San fran trip to La La Land. That's right, Los Angeles, where I had the great pleasure of speaking to the new members of the LA Leggers running team. And um, every year they have a new member orientation. They have two different ones, and I was able to only be there for the first group, but it was fantastic. LA Leggers is one of the one of the, if not the largest running group in Los Angeles. And uh, they're, they've they been around for, I think, 20 plus years. And I think the original intention was to prepare people to run the Los Angeles Marathon. And now it's more than that. So many of the LA Leggers run the Los Angeles Marathon. And I can attest to that because I was the race announcer for the Skechers Performance Los Angeles Marathon this year. And I saw oodles and oodles of L.A. Leggers come through my finish line. Um, there's the Roadrunner. There's a whole bunch of different uh, track clubs out there, or running clubs, I should say. But these people were fantastic. And I, what I really loved about them is the group is made of every man. You know, people tend to put runners in this box, and everybody looks like an Olympian. And that's just simply not true. And it's one of the things I think think leaders within the running industry really have to work hard to debunk that myth because so many people are intimidated by running. They think, oh, I have to be really lean and I have to be really thin and I have to be really fast and it's just simply not true. In fact, you know, for most races I host, I would say that maybe 5% of the runners or less look like runners. You know, those are the folks you could pick out of the crowd and say, yeah, I bet they have run a 5K. Other than that, everybody just looks like everybody else. You know, regular Joes and Janes, and we have people come through our finish lines that could lose 100 pounds, 200 pounds, even 300 pounds. So it really is the every man sport, every woman sport, and every in between, whatever you are. Um, it's, it's for everybody, and it doesn't even require you to run. You can go, quote unquote, run a race without ever having leapt forward, lunged your body forward. So uh, I love this group. There was well over 100 people there on uh, that Saturday morning. And the body types that came in were diverse. The ethnicities were diverse. And the thing everybody had in common was the hope and the intention to get fit and to, you know, give some athletic adventure a try uh, I loved it. I loved it. I love being around. I love being around you people, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lump you people all into a big ass group. So what? I said ass. I think that's my first curse on my show. <laughs> Maybe not, but probably because I try not to curse. Because you know I own a, a children's running program, so I try to stay wholesome. But I said the a word, so I'm sorry if you're in your car with your children right now. My apologies. That was tacky. Anyways, there's a big group. You all are a big group of people that I love. And and the sheer fact that you're listening to me means you're interested in getting fitter and living healthier. Because I don't think you just like me. You probably don't. Um, I mean, maybe you do. Hopefully you do. But I, I think you're more involved in the fitness aspect of this whole conversation. So I love being around you. And I loved being around them. And so we got there and there was a ton of people signing up and getting their t-shirt and getting their little lunchbox, which was filled with all sorts of goodies. And they were sweet enough to give me an LA Leggers shirt and a little lunchbox, which I'm actually going to send my kids to school with this year. So thank you so much, Barry Morrill, the president of the LA Leggers, because he he took a little school shopping off my list. But um, they had a great guy, Jimmy give a brief intro to the runners when everybody, all the new folks sat down into this room. And it was really nice because he did a great job of calming the nerves of people saying, listen, you don't have to be fast and you don't have to go far and we're going to gradually 
get you there at a pace that's comfortable to you. And they showed a wonderful little video on how they do things. And it was so cute because they start by saying, you know, we're a friendly group. So make sure while you're out on the public roads running, you say hi to other passersby. And I had a video of LA Lakers running together waving at folks, but then had a bunch of safety information. And you, there's a leader for your pace group and you run behind them. And if the leader sees glass in the road or a curb or uh, a banana peel, they'll say like footing and everybody behind them has to yell footing. So everybody knows to look down and keep an eye out. So nobody falls and, you know, curb up, curb down. And it's just really cute. We run in, we run two by two, which is so great because on race day, if you guys have run races, especially sizey races with thousands of people, it's super frustrating if there's a group of five people running side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Getting around them is a nightmare. And so the leggers are trained to run two by two, no more than that. And if they're running opposing, you know, maybe a cyclist coming down the road, they go single file. And so they're just thoughtful. That's what I thought. I thought the LA leggers, all of these people are going to be um, eased into their distances, which is fantastic preventing for preventing injuries and frustration and dropout. And they're also going to learn to be safe and um, polite runners, which is nice. You know, I'm on the stage at the beginning of the race. Sometimes it's me alone. Sometimes me and Rudy and we're going, folks, don't run side by side. Don't go in groups of bigger than two. Use runner courtesy. If you're going to walk, put your hand up and let the guy behind you know that you're going to walk so they don't slam into you. And so the LA Leggers are teaching courteous behavior, but their video was also super funny. And then um, once the video and the little very short uh, intro was over, everybody went out and ran a trial mile. So they just had to go half a mile up the beach on Santa Monica. I mean, it wasn't too shabby, right? And, and the little building we were in was legitimately on the sand on Santa Monica Beach. And so all these folks go out, they run half a mile one way, turn around and come back. And then they were told how fast they did that one mile. And so say you ran the one mile in 10 minutes, you would get put in the 12 minute pace group because that's a more reasonable distance or time per mile for someone who's going to do more than one mile, perhaps 10 miles eventually. So it's very well thought out. If you live in that area, I definitely suggest you join this group. Um, but they did their trial mile, and then they came back, and they were stuck listening to me. And so I spent the next 45 minutes, and boy, is that a short amount of time to really um, teach people a whole lot. But I, I tried to target the basics of strength training for runners, proper stretching, you know, basically tried to make some compelling arguments to do strength training, and then gave them access to my strength training for runners workout video and uh, I had some fantastic volunteers. And as a presenter, the dream is having a really gay, engaged group. And they were. They were totally engaged. And one of the highlights for me is um, when I talked about runner nutrition, again, short, sweet. This is how not to gain 25 pounds while training for a marathon, which is, ugh, it happens all the time, folks. People who are training for marathons think, oh, I'm running so much, I can eat whatever they want. And then they show up on race day way bigger than they hoped they would be. In fact, they thought they were going to lose weight, they gained. So I gave them the golden nugget of the exact formula for weight loss. But what I really enjoyed, and you all will appreciate this, is I gave the good 20 seconds where I berated the diet pills and the shakes and the supplements and the just the snake oil. But the second I mentioned Beachbody and opposing it, the room started cheering. And you know that's a great group when everyone, you know, I mentioned who has these bozos on Facebook trying to shove that beach body crap down their throat and the hands went up and the smiles got brighter and people were hooting and hollering. And I tell you, if you're, li if you're listening to me and you're selling that crap, stop because people hate you for it. Oh my gosh, they hate you and they want you to stop because it's garbage and it's crap and almost everybody knows it except for the poor suckers who are still buying it from you. And I've got Ross Jones who used to sell that stuff. And Ross has lost a ton of weight the right way. But he listened to my um, podcast on why diets are dumb, supplements stink, and yada, yada, yada. But he told me, he said, I used to sell Beachbody, but then I listened to you and I had no, I couldn't justify my behavior anymore. I couldn't justify it, so I stopped. And so 
Um, if you're one of those, please, God, please stop doing that to people. They're, you're not being a good friend. You're being a thief. So, um, But I love the reaction in the room. It was a highlight of the day for me because... People don't want to be taken advantage of, and it, it was awesome. It was an awesome moment. So uh, we had a really fun time, and another great highlight is at the beginning of my workshop, I asked a question. One woman raised her hand, and I said, you're a physical therapist, aren't you? No, I don't. I've never seen the woman before in my life, but she raised her hand to my question. She was the only person who did. I said, you're a physical therapist. She said, yes, I'm actually a physical therapy assistant. I said, okay, well, you're going to love me. And I told everybody, I said, listen, if you guys do what I tell you to do, you will never have to go see her. And that's the gist of all this. If you train wisely and you're a well-rounded athlete, you do the running, sure, but then you do the strength training and the stretching and you do it properly, you, know, you won't get injured unless you get hit by a bus, right? So, um, so I made that big, bold statement at the beginning of the workshop and then at the end, she raised her hand. She said, I have to tell you guys that... I sit through a lot of presentations and I'm excited at first and then I start to cringe when I hear people lying to their audience or they're just so ignorant. She said, this was the best presentation I have ever heard. Fitz was dead on, on the money and with everything she said and she's right. If you do what she tells you to do, you will never get injured and you will never have to come to physical therapy. So that was really good validation and again, just a really fun group of people. I have... Tremendous hope for all of them because they're being cared for. They're being prepared wisely by the leggers and the mentors, the leaders in that group are fantastic and they're just volunteers. They're people who got excited about the sport, have some experience and want to share that health and wealth of information they have. So it was it was a fun time. I, I, I live for being surrounded by you all and not just the running community, but surrounded by any... Any group of people that want to do better and be better, uh, it's it's a it's a thrill for me. And um, I am in California a lot, so whenever given the opportunity, I will go back and spend time with the Leggers because they rock. They they're wonderful. And you know, if you have a running group, I'd love to come chat with them too because obviously I get a kick out of it, right? So I had a nice few days in California. My kids were at summer camp, so I took an extra few days, relaxed. I went boating with friends, did some walking on the beach. I went to Encinitas, California and made some promo videos for, I'm going to be the announcer for the Surfing Madonna Beach Run. That is November 5th in Encinitas, California, Moonlight Beach. And I would love for you all to be there. There's going to be a 5K, 10K, 15K, and kids run. And what's great about this run is you're actually running on the beach. So you won't be on the trail. You won't be on the pavement. You will be running on the sand. And this is a very popular race to begin with. But they are bringing in the fancy folks from Guinness, the Book of World Records. And they're working to break the record for largest beach run ever. So... Uh, I am super excited about that race. In fact, that is, yeah, November 15th, Surfing Madonna. And if you want to do it, go to surfingmadonnarun.org. And if you use discount code FITS20, you get 20% off any race you register. Again, it's FITS20 for the Surfing Madonna. And while I'm at it, I have a few other races I'm going to be announcing in the very near future. On September 17th, I will be in Detroit announcing... The Detroit Women's Half Marathon 10K, 5K, and that is a race I've been doing for quite a few years, and it is so much fun. It's part of the Goddess series of races put on by Epic Races, and so yes, it's a, a women's-themed race, but we have tons of men run as well. Um, the only thing that normally happens with the women's theme races is men can't win awards, so you can't be the champion, guys. Sorry, but you can be the smartest guy on the planet and go run with a bunch of beautiful ladies in Detroit. It's on Bell Island, and it is an absolute love fest. I love, 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 love this race. So Detroit, September 17th, and um, that's a 5K, 10K half marathon. And and uh, the discount code for that is FITSNESS. 15 D W H. So it's F I T Z N E S S, the number one five, and then D W H for Detroit Women's Half. And you can use that code to save 15% on any of the races. And then on September 24th, I will be in Pennsylvania 
announcing the inaugural Standing Stone Half Marathon. There's a relay and a 5K, and that should be a wonderful event. It's a beautiful area. In fact, the race, this is so cool. Oh, you know what? Sur Surfing Madonna and Standing Stone have this in common. Both races start in the afternoon. I think the Surfing Madonna starts at 3, and I believe Standing Stone starts around 1, but the weather should be beautiful. Um, so anyways, the discount code for Standing Stone, it's a bit longer, but it's Standing Stone, the number 10, the word dollars off. So Standing Stone, $10 off, and you could use that code to save $10 on any of the races. But uh, I would love to see you. I love when my people come to my races because... I enjoy welcoming everybody through the finish line, but I especially love run, um, welcoming my favorite walkers and runners. So please join me. Standing Stone also has a relay. So if you want to just do part of the half marathon with a friend, you can sign up for that. And uh, there should be some other cool, cool things going on. So I uh, had a great time in Los Angeles. I'm looking forward to these events. Hopefully you'll all be there at all of them. But I... Yeah, I was coming home, I flew into Atlanta, which I normally do, and the cool thing about Atlanta is they have this underground subway station. It's a very large airport, and so the subway takes you from, you know, Terminal T to Terminal A or whatever. It gets you there faster. But you also have the opportunity to walk to your terminal, terminal bleh, sorry, and so I'm in Atlanta airport all the time, and if I have any sort of significant layover, I take my time to walk. That's where I get it out, because I'm pinched up on a plane for four hours coming from California, and I tell you, that is close to torture for me. And for some reason, the plane I was on, it felt like it was way smaller than usual, and the guy sitting next to me was six foot six, and I'm slightly claustrophobic. Actually, I'm fairly claustrophobic, but... That's besides the point. So I end up on my knees in my seat. I'm one of those really squirmy plane sitters. And then I get up and I go and I stretch in the galley or the kitchen area. And then I go in the bathroom. In the bathroom, I throw my foot up on the closed toilet and I do all these stretches. And if you follow me on Instagram at fitness, you'll see I'm always posting plane stretches because I want to encourage you to do the same thing because there's no reason to just sit still for four hours. It's no good for you. So get up, walk around, stretch in the galley, stretch in the in the potty, whatever. Um, but so I did that and then I get off and I go walking and I found this time I actually tracked the distance. It is 0.8 miles between one end of the terminal length to the other. So 0.8 miles, I was able to walk three miles during my layover and I think I did in about 40-ish minutes. So that was a really good use of my time, and I was also able to get some lunch after that, uh, healthy lunch, in fact. But uh, walking, and and I dr I came prepared, so I like to dress like a grown up on the on the airplane. And when I arrived in California, I was wearing jeans and cowboy boots and a nice shirt. And when I left California, I was in my uh, workout pants and a comfy jacket and sneakers because I specifically knew I was going to try and walk for at least an hour and get some workout in. So, you know, you can you can be lenient with your wardrobe. Don't show up at the airport looking like a slob. At least wear nice looking uh, comfy clothes, but that's that's what I chose to do. But here's where I'm going with all that. Besides the fact that you should be active at the airport is while walking, you know they have the people, I'm going to call them ushers because I don't know what else they are, but they're the employees that push people in wheelchairs that need the assistance. So there was one guy, and I guess I crossed paths with him a few times, and so I was going towards the end. I was maybe at mile two, for example, and he was coming off the elevator with a woman he was pushing. He And um, she was obese, and there was two other women in her group that were also being pushed in wheelchairs that were obese, and whatever, none of my business. But he made the comment to me. He said, are you just walking? I said, yeah, I'm going for three miles. I have a long layover. And the woman in, in the front wheelchair, she looks, she goes, we're too fat to walk. <laughs> and I just was so sad for her. You know, I was just... So sad because you assume people that are in wheelchairs are injured in some capacity, right? They, they can't walk. They've got back issues or MS or who knows, right? None of my business. 
But she just basically told me that they were all in wheelchairs because they were overweight. And they probably could have walked, right? And so I just, ugh, it just made me sad. And so I know there's a lot of people who pick on overweight people. And that's never, ever an instinct of mine. Oh, but I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. And of course, she was kind of mocking herself, making an excuse like, oh, we're too fat to walk, which is not true. She probably could have gotten her butt up and walked to the terminal because she didn't declare any sort of pain or injury. But that, you know, when is enough enough? You know, I've been heavier. I was 45 pounds heavier than I am now. And in my early 20s, I decided to give that lifestyle a rest and change my ways. But to get so overweight that you can't walk across the airport, you know, that's disconcerting to me. And, um, you know, everybody has their own stopping point. And I have a bunch of my hotties that are um, Timothy Powell's down 140 pounds. Richard Green is, I think he's down 160 pounds. We have so many people who've lost colossal amounts of weight. And that means they were at some point obese. Um, and they've changed their ways. And I, I don't know, I just wish I could get, out of all my years doing this, I still look at people and I think, oh, I wish, I wish you wished better for yourself or I wish we knew each other and I could help you. But they have to... Um, want it themselves. It's just, it's still very curious to me. I had, a, I had a few other moments. One in California, I was at a soup plantation restaurant, which is kind of like Sweet Tomatoes, if, or I think it's a sister restaurant owned by the same people as Sweet Tomatoes. But there was a family, three folks, at least clo- all three of them close to 400 pounds. And they were eating like they were 400 pounds, very hearty meals showing up, con- constant trips to the buffet. But you know, again, I sat there thinking, ah, you're at, you're at soup plantation. You can make some really healthy choices here. And I know they would want to be fit, right? You just, who, who doesn't want to? If I, if I stand in front of a room of a thousand people and I say, you know, raise your hand if you'd like to win a lottery, all hands go up. Nobody says, no, keep your millions of dollars. I don't want it. If I said, who'd want to have a fit body? All hands would go up. So I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I've been doing this for a very long time, and um, it, still, it still hurts my heart to see people uh, just, I hate to say throwing it all away, but it's tough. It's tough. I, I also saw a man in California walking down the street, and every step looked painful. You know, the legs, his legs were so big he couldn't put one foot, he just couldn't walk in a straight line, and he shifted side to side, and oh, I I can't go throwing my business card at people like, hey, clearly you're very overweight, and I'm so smart about this, and I'd like to help you. I'm sure, I'm sure the folks in that position, um, they know where they are, and they know there's resources, um, but oh, it kills me. It kills me often. Sometimes I can just look away, but Sometimes it really grates on me and, and makes me so sad. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I hope you all have your breaking point. You know, I my point, what was I, 160-something pounds where I finally said enough, and then I really started making headway with my eating habits. And thank God for my profession, I was able to find the science to figure it all out and lose the weight properly. Um, but I hope you have a breaking point. And, and again, if you're listening to me, I have good faith you are, but I hope the breaking point is always very low. You know, for me, now that I'm at my ideal weight, I've got two pound wiggle room. I get on the scale, if I've gained more than two pounds, I slam on the brakes, go in reverse, and I drop those two pounds. And that's so much easier than having to drop seven or 15 or 500. Um, so keep your breaking point low because where the enough is enough marker falls for everybody is obviously in very different places. <sighs> and and sometimes it gets to a point where it's very, very sad. So there's there's a way to be kind of over, kind of a, carrying an extra weight and maybe some people notice, some don't, and maybe it's just your own burden to bear, but some folks it really ugh, it crushes my soul. <laughs> I just can't take it sometimes. Oh, it's very hard. Very hard to to want to help everybody, and I do, I do, but I know that I can't force myself upon everybody. So, um, yeah, that's a tricky. If you guys, if you've been there, if you've been 
300 pounds and and you've got some insight to share with me, please do. We want to hear it, you know. I want to hear it. I'm sure all my listeners want to hear it too. I I I know it's got to be rough. I know you got to want to want to change um I don't know. I don't know. It's a conversation that could go on forever and ever. But that did remind me of some things I could help you with, help everybody with. And one of the things that I think it's important to know is it's okay to feel hungry sometimes. So some folks go, oh, I'm, you know, I'm starving. Well, are you starving or are you a little bit hungry? Can you put off a snack um, a little longer? Can you, or can you pause until you get to some healthy food? I think some people think, oh, I can't, I got to get a midnight snack because I'm a little hungry. Well, there's a difference between a little bit hungry and starving. So yeah, it's all right to feel a little bit hungry at times and not to panic over it. And even if you know, it's 11 o'clock at night and you're going to bed and maybe you are a little bit hungry. It's okay to go to sleep. Wake up and have a have a good breakfast. You know the difference between starving and, hmm, I could go for a little snack. The, hmm, I could go for a little snack is probably survivable. As long as you're not miserable, then, then you can go to sleep a little bit hungry. Think of the folks around the world starving all the time. You can handle a little hungry. And if you, if you do feel like you're starving, then go have a healthy choice. Get you know, make yourself a bowl of cucumbers and tomatoes with salt. You know that. That's a nice choice. And then the other thing is you don't feel obligated to clean your plate all the time. A lot of us grew up in families where parents are saying, clean your plate. You got to eat it all. Well, no, you don't have to eat it all. I actually have a friend that I dine with often, and he goes, oh, you, you haven't eaten all of it. You barely ate. And I think, no, I ate. I ate enough. And there's a difference. And I also have gotten out of the um, habit of enjoying feeling stuffed. You know, I don't want to leave a restaurant feeling, I ate too much. I got to unbutton my pants. I don't want to move. You know, leave some things on your plate. It's okay to do that. It's okay to leave half. In fact, you could be the person who says, you know, I would like to order the shrimp kebabs with veggies and a potato, leave half of it in a box for later. If you could cut that in half and, you know, get half of it to go and only bring me half, that would be great. That's a good idea to plan in advance, but uh, try and avoid that overfilled, stuffed feeling because much like alcohol, you know, people with alcohol don't tend to exercise, they don't sleep well, blah, blah, blah. People who overeat don't tend to want to move when they're stuffed and they probably don't sleep very well either. And so, you know, start looking at your choices at mealtime, whether you're eating at home or you're eating at a restaurant. You know, do you need to eat right now? Can you wait? Do you, are all of these snacks necessary? If not, that's a really great way to cut some calories out of your day. And just saying no thank you to seconds or leaving food on your plate, it's also a really, really good choice. So, um, You know, do what you can to modify your eating habits. I even, I'll pick, I'm a picker, you know, when you start eating food um, that you're not hungry for. So I'll trash it with pepper. Whatever's on the table that that I don't like, I'll trash my food. I'll put, I don't know, Diet Coke on my mashed potatoes or pepper all over my chicken, for example, because I don't like pepper very much. And then I won't pick at it. Oh, and here's a stupid story. I went out to dinner with my girlfriend, Vicky about a week and a half ago, and we ate at Roadhouse, and um, we, we chatted for about an hour before we ordered, and then we ordered food. I had a grilled chicken salad, and then we finished our meal, and I sent most of mine back, but we were sitting there for about another hour chatting, and they had the peanuts on the table, and I was just mindlessly started breaking open the peanuts and eating them. Well, at some point, you know how you open the peanut and there's that little brown skin on the peanut? So I had tossed one or two peanuts into my mouth and then the peanut skin got stuck in my throat. It just stuck there and I started choking. And it's super annoying. I'm (coughs) choking, eyes watering, turning red. And I was in the middle of telling a story So, of course, my obligation is to continue telling this stupid story while choking. And I'm trying to tell her, while I'm choking, thinking she would be concerned, I've got the peanut skin in my throat. It's the peanut skin. And all she could hear was (laughs) 
<laughs> so stupid. Penis skin. <laughs> I'm choking on the penis skin. So I'm choking and she's dying laughing at me and I'm thinking, why are you so mean? I'm choking on peanut skin. So anyways, we finally, I thought I might die. I thought I was going to die on the peanut skin and she thought she was going to die laughing because I told her I was choking on penis skin. So anyways, that's a stupid story to take home. And once again, if you're in the car with your children, sorry, sorry about that. But careful with that penis skin. Got it? Careful with the penis skin. So uh, next up on my list of nonsense to chat about, Michael Jones just had his birthday last week. And Michael Jones is one of my hotties. I met him last April, April of 2016 in Disney World at a bakery of all places with the Mickey Miles Running Club. They had a meetup and I showed up to visit with some of my friends and Michael introduced himself and he, oh, I think he was 260, uh, am I getting that wrong? I think, yeah, I think 260 something pounds ish. And he asked me about how to lose weight. I told him about the formula and I invited him to join the hottie group. And I think the story is, is that he started following the hottie group, but he didn't really dive in full force. That's right. Actually, he started using the formula, but he didn't join in with the strength training workouts and stuff. And eventually he did. And he has become my poster child or one of my great poster children. And he's such a wonderful ambassador for what I do because I don't know if I've ever in my life had someone who supported me so much. I, I try very hard to support everybody else, but this is a man who says, I appreciate fits and I love the formula and it's worked wonders for me and my beautiful wife, Christine. And um, he's so appreciative. I don't, I don't know if I've ever had anyone show appreciation for my work more strongly than Michael has. So um, I'm very grateful to him because it's refreshing, right? I mean, a lot of people come and they'll lose 100 pounds and it's like, high five, thanks, lady, bye. And he is uh, on a daily basis. He's very appreciative and, and who could ask for more? So Michael, happy birthday and thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for me too because it's been a pleasure watching your success and a pleasure watching your wife be successful and enjoy your daughter participating. Olivia's adorable. So Michael had a goal to originally to lose 50 pounds by his 45th birthday, which was July. I'm going to butcher it. I think it's the 26th, but oh no, 24th. I think it's July 24th. So he worked hard to lose 50 pounds by his 45th birthday, but he happened to lose those 50 pounds quite a few months early. And so what did he do? He didn't just settle and say, yay, I'm done. I've achieved that goal. He set the bar higher. Became, I'm going to lose 50 pounds, 55 pounds by my 45th birthday. And then it became 70 pounds by my 45th birthday. And so Michael, I believe, lost 66 pounds by his 45th birthday. And I, I couldn't be prouder of him. And, and to look at his before and afters, and he's done a great job of logging his uh, workouts, daily post daily videos on the hottie page, but he did a great video the other day putting on his old big guy clothes, the old Michael clothes, which probably could fit two of the new Michaels in them. Um, but his face is totally different. His body's totally different. Not only has he lost the weight, but he's training for the Marine Corps marathon. When I said pick a big, hairy, audacious goal for yourself, that BHAG, Michael took it on big time. He said, yep, I'm going to do the Marine Corps marathon. So he's in training for that. And uh, like I said, his wife, Christine's lost 40 pounds, and it's been amazing to see the changes in her. But one of the things he talked about was not only his future goals, but he listed a bunch of fun things that he's done already. He's done paddle boarding and he's this and that, and that really inspired me because I thought, you know what? It's nice to keep looking forward but it's also important to recognize the things that you have done. You know, keep looking forward, set the bar higher, aim for new things, but also let's celebrate, let's document the things that you have done on your accomplished list. So you got the bucket list and let's, what do we call the, the place where you've put the stuff you've got, the conquered list, conquered list, that's what it is. I need you to make a conquered list. And so, you know, for me, 
my conquered list would include, you know, fighting, all my kickboxing matches. I think that's a badass fun. Oh, look, I said that again. I said ass twice in the three times now in this podcast. So maybe my squeaky queen, squeaky clean thing is it's going awry. But um, yeah, my fights, that is something I hold so dear to me. And I know so many people think I'm an absolute lunatic for it, but I... I would kill to be back in the ring today. Oh, those moments were so special to me and they were so big in my mind and in my heart. And I was so proud of me. Even the fight that I lost, I I walked out of that ring feeling like I was the queen of the world type thing. So I would put my fights in there. I'd put my half marathons, my 10Ks, my 5K, my obstacle course races, my mud runs, parasailing, water skiing, wakeboarding, snowboarding, snow skiing, all the travel that I've done. I've I've roamed the streets of St. Petersburg, Russia by myself, right post-Cold War. There I am. There's soldiers on all the streets, armed soldiers, and I'm trotting along in my purple leotard. You know, what the hell? That was a cool thing I've done. I've been to Ireland, Germany, Switzerland, Norway, Denmark, France, Germany, you name it. Those are things that are on my conquered list. I've got a bunch of those things. I've snorkeled. I've what have I done? Have I, I think, well, don't tell my children, but there's been skinny dipping. Um, I've climbed a waterfall. Ooh, this is my waterfall story. It's totally stupid, but I'm going to break it up quickly. I went, I was about 20 years old. My sister and her husband at the time, my mean sister, that's right, the mean one, uh, we went to Colorado. I went with them. He was playing a baseball tournament, and he was working in the communication center for a police department at the time, and he was a collegiate baseball pitcher, and they they do this thing called semi-pro softball, and so they had a league based mostly on um, police officers from Plantation Police Department, and they were playing in a tournament in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. So I went with them, and um, we took one morning, very early in the morning, we were going to go climb, I think it was Fish Creek Falls, a waterfall in Steamboat, and so we went over there, and I was wearing these rubbery duck shoes. Remember the duck brand? They were rubbery and navy and brown or whatever. So I'm wearing those shoes as we climb up the waterfall. And it's just, just me, my brother-in-law, Chris, and his friend. What was his name? I don't know. We're going to call him Kurt. I think it was Kurt. But anyway, that's the name for now. And Kurt's a big police officer. And so we're climbing the waterfall. And we get about halfway up. And Kurt says, everybody take off their shoes because we have to walk through the water. And we don't want our shoes to be slippery on the way down. I think, oh, that's a, that makes sense. Okay. So I take off my shoes. And I step foot into the waterfall and the rocks. And the rock moves. And I pick up my foot. And my middle toe is now broken and horizontal, resting across my pinky and ring toe. Broken toe. So, ah, I pull up this toe that looks totally <laughs> wonky. And uh, I'm like, damn it, I broke my toe. And so they go, all right, well, why don't you just sit there while we go up to the top and we'll, we'll help you down on the way down. So like a dodo, I just sit there with my toe, my, my foot in the ice cold water, which helped at the time. So I wait for them, and then I've got to put my shoe on over my broken toe, which is crazy. It's not good at all. This is a bad situation. I'm crazy toe, bent to the side. Now i got to shove it in a shoe and climb, I don't know, 100 yards down or something like that. So I, I don't recall ever shaking so much in my life. I was so scared getting down. But I finally got down the waterfall, and then um, Kurt gave me a piggyback up to the car. So we all go back up there, my sister down, what happened? I broke my toe. And so I guess with the toes, it's not such a big deal. Now, mind you, after that break, I continued to break about 20, had 29 more toe breaks while fighting and doing one other really stupid thing. But anyway, um, they say, well, you got to pop the toe back into place. And I'm thinking, you're out of your mind. And we don't want to go to a ER. And they, they said, well, you know, let us do it. And Kurt offers to do it. And my dumb, dumb mind, I feel like he's a police officer. So sure, he's qualified to do it. Why in God's earth I'm leaving my foot health in the hands of this cop? But I, I admire and trust police so much that I think, okay, Kurt's the one that's going to do it. But um, but I, I 
put my foot in his hand and then I, I kept pulling it away. So we decide that we're going to go have some cocktails. And we go to this restaurant, BW3 in downtown Steamboat, and we start drinking heavily. And I believe my drink of choice was called the Mind Eraser. And after too many of those, I'm... <laughs> Um, I'm at the point where I go, all right, he can do my toe now. And so I make the brave move to get up and go over to Kurt so he can pop my toe back into place. But as I do it, I stagger, slam my foot into the table. And when I look down, my toe is right back in place. So how about that? <laughs> I kicked the table and the toe re returned to its proper placement. It ended up, you know, my foot ended up being massive and black and blue for a very long time and it took a while to recover, but whoo, I'm glad at least I didn't have to live through um, putting my foot in his hand and having him do that. That would have been awful. So anyway, um, super stupid story, but it's on my conquer list. That's it. I have that waterfall experience on my conquer list. Um, I, there's a lot of cool things I have on my conquer list. But there's not enough. You know, there's a thing they do called Climb for Cancer, and I think it's Mount Kilimanjaro, but you raise a bunch of money and then you go climb the mountain. I would love to do that. That would be on my, you know, to be conquered list. Um, right now, I, I leave my kids so much for work that I certainly wouldn't go leave them gallivanting for something leisurely. But once they're in college, that would be on my list. Becoming a, a quality surfer. That would be on my list. I'm I'm haven't tried surfing in a very long time, so I got some things on my list. What is on your list? You know, you got to have your moving forward list, your bucket list, but then your I've conquered this list. Make it big on your wall. Put put a dry erase board or a chalkboard or something in paper or with pen. You know, make a list of things you've conquered, and then pat yourself on the back over that because I think you know. Uh, Looking forward's important, but when you've done some really great things, you should look back and be proud of that. And, you know, hopefully that will give you more confidence, courage, inspiration to move forward and conquer new things. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's my moral of the story today. So let's talk about the cool stuff we've done, too. So, speaking of things that someone's done, is my hottie Katie Mathis, you know what she's done? She's broken her ankle. She went roller skating. She's done a fantastic job losing weight. In fact, she's a cousin of Timothy Powell, one of my hotties. Timothy, I just mentioned, has lost, I believe, 140 pounds. And Katie, I think she's torched close to 20 in one month. So she's she has a big weight loss goal, and I know for a fact she's going to get there, but she broke her ankle last night roller skating, and she's going to require surgery. So Katie, I hope you recover quickly. I'm really sorry that happened. But um, as I was tell everybody else, if you stick with the formula, the weight will continue to fall off. You could, you could lose weight in a complete body cast if you're sticking to the formula. So have no fear that your weight loss won't continue because it will. And then pursue any exercise which doesn't require you to stand up. You know, other than that, you probably will be able to do it. Talk with your doctor, get with a physical therapist, but I have full faith you'll be able to stay, feet, stay fit along the way. And um, while people have been asking, I have another product I found. They sent me a thing called a hideaway bottle, and it's really cool. It is a bottle that collapses, it, that accordion-style collapse but it turns into a tiny little saucer, um, but it's a really good idea if you go camping, if you go hiking, if you're someone who goes running. Uh, so here's the deal. I don't like to run with a water bottle. I don't like to run with a camelback. I don't like to run with water on a belt. A lot of people do, and I think it's awesome, and if you like it and it doesn't bother me, you definitely should. But this thing is cool because it's a water bottle that collapses down into a saucer and it has a little um, case you can get w with it. And the case just makes it look like a little hockey puck. And it has a, um, a little clip on the end that, for example, if you were riding a bike, you could clip it to. And if you're running, you could clip it to your belt. But I, what I would do instead of carrying water that sloshes around the whole time, I would take this and bring it to a water fountain or a hose fill it up, drink from it, collapse it, and get back and go. So um, this is a really cute 
idea, clever I should say, and it's Hideaway, H-Y-D, Away. It comes in a bunch of cool colors, and I even thought besides taking this with you while you hike and filling it up in the waterfall that you're going to break your toe in, um, I thought this would be really cool to take into the movie theater because you know how they won't let you bring in your own drinks and they're going to charge you about 17 bucks for a bottle of water. All water, all movie theaters have water fountains, so you could take your little hideaway bottle, fill it up at the water fountain like a, like a, like a ninja, bring it back into the movie theater, and boom, you saved yourself seventeen dollars. I also think it would be really cool to use for your dog. So this water bottle you can make really tall, or you can just uh, uncollapse it halfway, and so it's just handy dandy. I liked it. And I don't share stuff I don't like. I get people send me a bunch of products all the time and I ignore or, yeah, I don't send them back. But I give away things that I just am not interested in. If I think it's of any value to you, I'll share it. But, yeah, it's hideaway, H-Y-D, away, bottle, dot com. And um, I would check it out. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I like it. And my hideaway bottle is blue. And the hideaway bottle case is black, and I think it's snazzy. So I'm going to actually keep it in my backpack from now on, and it'll be the thing I take with me. Voila! So I hope you guys are having a San Fantastic summer. I hope you've been doing all sorts of fun things outdoors, on the water, enjoying the heat while we have it, because in about 12 weeks, there's going to be a lot of complaining about the cold. So get outside and get moving and enjoy the water sports, especially while you can. Folks, stick around. Listen to Rudy Novotny tell you all about my Morning Mile program. It's the greatest thing I've ever done. It's the greatest thing I've ever been affiliated with. And if you love children or you care about a special school, help me get your kids moving in the mornings. It means so much. So you'll hear about that at the end of this podcast. If you haven't already done so, follow me at Fitness on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. I have tons of free research resources for you all at fitness.com. And, you know, send me your comments, send me your questions. Let me know what you want to hear about. And uh, I'll include those in future podcasts. So without further ado, get to work. Bye, everybody. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to give the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children the chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler, morning milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The morning mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting morningmile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's morningmile.com. Long may you run.